In this part of the series, we are going to aggregate our data. Again, we are going to use our Titanic data frame inside an interactive PySpark session. By now, you should be able to pull up an interactive session by yourself. If you don't, make sure to watch the previous videos that will show you how to start Spark. Um, we have read in the Titanic data into a Spark data frame called Titanic. So we have a data frame called Titanic, and in that data frame, there is the Titanic data set. Now, aggregation in Spark is pretty easy, and it is another method on our data frame we are going to use. Maybe we are interested in the mean fare per class. Of course, we expect higher fares for first class and the lowest mean fare for third class. This task actually represents two distinct tasks. First, we need to group our data frame by class, and then we need to calculate the mean of the fare variable. And this is how you can do that in Spark. So you're gonna operate on the Titanic data frame. Then we're gonna group by the p class value uh, variable. Sorry, we're gonna do some aggregation. Put in a dictionary. The name of the column is the key, and the name of the aggregation function will be the value. So let's close the aggregation function and let's show. Oops, sorry. So let's digest the command and where the actual work is done. So first we call the group by method on our Titanic data frame. Inside that method, you put in the name of the columns you want to group the data frame by. And this group by command will not produce anything of value by itself. Now, if you would only call that method and try to look at the data frame, you would actually get back an error. So if you would just say Titanic group by P class, and then to tell it to show us the data, you get an error. So the group by command makes sense only when you append a aggregation call um, to that method. And all the aggregation calls that are defined within that method are done by groups that are defined inside the group by method call. Now, how does the AGG method call look like? So the AGG method is responsible for creating aggregations. It takes a dictionary as its argument, or this is one option to do so. It takes a dictionary as its argument. And every dictionary key represents a column in your data frame. Every associated value is the name of the function you would like to apply to that column. So in this case, we want to use the, only the fair column and we want to apply the mean function to it. Um, there are many more function names available. For example, you could use max, min, first, last, etc. Now, what about multiple aggregations on the same variable? How would, how would that work like? Now, instead of just putting in a dictionary, you can actually use the functions directly, providing the column name as an argument. So first, we got to import the functions, of course. So import pyspark.sql.functionssf, all right. And next, we're going to do the grouped aggregation again, but we're going to do multiple aggregations on the same column. So first of all, we're just going to group by P class. Then we put in the AGG method. And now we're going to use another style to actually make the aggregation. So we give in the function name. So we're going to use the mean function. So F dot mean. And in there, we just put in the name of the column. So fair in this case. Now we want the mean and the max. So we're going to say F mean fair comma F dot max fair. So we want the mean and the max. And let's show that. As you can see, now we get the mean and the max value of the fair column. And this is starting to look very interesting, um, but maybe we want to add yet another grouping variable. So let's run the same command, but this time we are grouping by class and gender. Additionally, we want to get the distribution of the age column. Also, we're going to save the final result into a new data frame for later use. So the next thing we're going to do is a bit more complicated and we're going to save the result in another data frame called fair underscore AGGR. And that will be Titanic. So I said we're going to group by P class again. Oops, sorry. Going to group by P class again, but also we are going to group by the sex variable. Okay, then follows the aggregation. So we want the mean of the fair column. We want the max of the fair column. So this is not new, but now we also want the mean of the edge column, since we want to know the distribution of the edge column. 
we want to have the max of the h column. Also, let's take the min of the h column. All right, so that's a fairly long aggregation. Let's save that. All right, and let's have a look at the data frame. All right, there it is. So oh, we can also sort that data frame to make it look a bit nicer. So we're gonna sort by P class and then by sex. Oops, sorry, forgot to show the data frame. And there you are. So that looks pretty nice. Now, one thing I don't like is how the column names are now basically the expression that represents the function call. So you have like max, open parentheses, fair, avg, open parentheses, h, etc. Um, of course, we could always rename our columns. For this, you can use the with column renamed method. And it takes just two arguments. The first argument is the old column name, and the second is the new column name. Now, for example, if we want to rename max fair to fair underscore max, we can do it like that. So let me clear the screen. So we're gonna overwrite the data frame since we want to save our changes, and we're gonna use the with column renamed method. And we want to name rename max open parentheses fair to fair underscore max. Let's have a look at the data frame. All right, there it is. As you can see, we renamed our data frame. Now again, notice how I overrode our data frame. If I wouldn't do that, the renaming would not be saved to the final data frame. I think the syntax I've just shown you is pretty neat and I think you can do pretty complex aggregations with very little code. Also, since the result of aggregations is just another data frame, you can use that aggregation as input in some other code. It doesn't have to be the end product. Another very common aggregation is counting the number of rows. And that is also pretty simple. For that, you could use the agg method and use count as the name of the aggregation function you would like to invoke. However, if you only want to compute a count and no other aggregation, the syntax is even simpler. For example, if you just want to count the number of rows in your data frame, no grouping whatsoever, you can use the count method on a data frame. So you can say titanic dot count. And notice how the return value is not a data frame, but an integer value. However, you could also group that data frame and use the count method. So we could say Titanic group by, since we want to group the data frame and we're going to group by P class and sex, then we count that and let's show that resulting data frame. So again, the result will be another, oh, let's also, let's sort that data frame by P class and sex. That looks nicer. So again, the result will be another data frame that counts the combinations of P class and gender. Last but not least, I want to show you how to keep only distinct rows in a data frame. You might argue that this is not really an aggregation. However, since it effectively reduces the number of rows in a data frame, I decided to include that in this section. So the command to keep only distinct rows is pretty simple. Let's just select the P class column and keep the distinct rows. So we're gonna just gonna select the P class column. So I'm gonna use the select method. And we're just gonna select the P class. Now, now if, we, if we wouldn't do anything, it would just list the rows of the P class column. However, now we're gonna say Titanic select P class distinct. So only keep distinct rows and show. So there it is. Only three rows, one row for every class that there is on board the Titanic. So this concludes our look into how we can aggregate our data frames.